Hi, I'm Pierre Roman, and sitting with me here today is Joey Aiello. Uh, he's here to answer our Q&A on the future of PowerShell. Welcome, Joey. Thanks for having me, Pierre. So, tell us a little bit about uh, what's coming up with the state of PowerShell. Yeah, so for the last couple of years, we've been working on uh, PowerShell Core, which was our open source foray into, uh, uh, you know, with, with the PowerShell uh, technology out of Windows into open source onto GitHub, uh, going cross-platform with Mac and Linux support, supporting SSH remoting by default. Uh, you know, we're really opening ourselves up to more and more uh, hybrid and heterogeneous scenarios. Uh, and so for the past uh, six to nine months or so, we've been hard at work on PowerShell 7, which we're shipping in, in January, and we really see as sort of the coalescence, uh, much like those familiar with .NET 5, uh, the sort of coalescence of, of the old, old world of Windows PowerShell uh, and this sort of new, new uh, PowerShell core world that, that we've been working on uh, for, for a while now. Yeah. Okay, so it's shipping in January, PowerShell 7, so is that a replacement of Windows PowerShell? So we're, you know, we're leaving Windows PowerShell in, uh, in the box, right? We, we really want people to be able to rely on the stability uh, and the dependability that Windows PowerShell has, has uh, laid down for them. So um, you know, all the modules and scripts that they're used to running against PowerShell.exe in the box, we want those to keep working just the way they've been working. Um, we do want to tell everyone uh, that we, we believe we've reached a state with backwards compatibility in terms of the Windows PowerShell modules uh, and, and that there are enough valuable new features and, and performance improvements and stability improvements in PowerShell 7 uh, that we really believe that it's time for everyone, Windows PowerShell, PowerShell Core customer alike, to switch to 7 uh, and, and really get on the same track with, uh, with PowerShell going forward. So, of course, they, uh, they can use like PowerShell out of the box and PowerShell 7 concurrently. Yeah, so the, they work completely side by side. And one of the great things about PowerShell Core, PowerShell 7, uh, is that it can be installed completely side by side with the existing Windows PowerShell installation. Uh, you don't risk you know, any impact to your, your existing workloads. Uh, so all your Windows PowerShell scripts are going to run just fine. And in fact, in order to invoke PowerShell Core, you're going to have to explicitly call out to pwsh.exe rather than, than PowerShell, uh, which is the same binary we use uh, on, on the Linux and Mac side as well. Um, but you know, the, the idea here is that you could you know, X copy deploy PowerShell 7 down to your desktop, uh, start running some of your old Windows PowerShell scripts against it without having any kind of impact to your, your existing uh, uh, automation, uh, and, and you know, really find out whether or not it's time for you to move to PowerShell 7. Okay, so if somebody's had in their enterprise a, a load of different PowerShell scripts, and they were running it on Windows PowerShell, and suddenly they say, okay, we've got this new thing in PowerShell Core uh, 6, and so I'll start running my scripts in there, and it fails. Yeah. So what do they do now? Yeah, so um, I mean, one of the first things you should always do if you have any problem with PowerShell, you know, we're fully open source. We track all of our bugs and feature requests in, a, in an open, transparent way. Come on to GitHub and file an issue, right? Tell us, tell us what problem you're experiencing. It's very likely that someone else has already experienced the same problem, uh, in which case, you know, use the search feature, come into that thing, tell us how you're also experiencing the same problem. Uh, but if you are the first one, file an issue and tell us, Okay. Um, right? Uh, but one of the great things about 7 uh, is that we're actually including a, a Windows PowerShell wrapper. Um, and so if you're running on Windows and you experience a commandlet that still is not within that 85% module compatibility that we are, we're achieving with, with PowerShell 7 uh, and Server 2019, um, then you, know, you, you can simply import the module uh, using, using a special use Windows PowerShell flag um, and that's actually going to create a Windows PowerShell process in the background automatically. Call that command letter, that script block within that Windows PowerShell process, and then pass it back as a serialized object to the PowerShell 7 instance that you're, you're living within. Um, and actually, if this is in System 32, we do this for you totally automatically. So, you know, we expect that a lot of scripts that may not have worked in 6 are actually going to work great in 7, and you can pick up a preview today and try it out. Okay, so that kind of covers the, the stopgap for, for those modules that have yet to be yes. uh, ported over. Yes. Okay, perfect. So if we look at enterprise, and, and historically speaking, enterprises are, they don't like to be bleeding edge too much, they're more like an N minus two. So what, right. do, we, what do we tell to the, the, these sysadmins that are in that position. Yeah, absolutely, and, and stability is hugely important when it comes to automation, right? Like when we're dealing with, with mission critical IT workloads, you know, we, we need to make sure that, that uh, you know, the, this, the bleeding edge isn't potentially you know, putting us at risk for our workloads. Um, but you know, one of the great things about open source is that we've been able to sort of chart our journey uh, to PowerShell 7 with the community over, over the last two and a half years. So a lot of what we've been shipping out is PowerShell Core 6.0, 6.1, 6.2. Um, you know, this was our, our really the beginning of our foray in, into uh, uh, the .NET Core based uh, uh, PowerShell. 
And with seven, this is really sort of the, the epitome of our stability and our backwards compatibility exercises and our confidence that, that we're reaching a point that, that uh, you know, admins like that who depend on, on LTS branches can depend on seven. Um, and one of the great things we're doing there is, is uh, because we're shipping with .NET Core 3.1, we're actually able to support PowerShell 7 as an LTS build. Um, so we are going to support it for, for the full three years that .NET Core 3.1 is, is supported as well. Okay, perfect. We have a question from our audience. Jeff is asking that if they submit a bug report for PowerShell, to the PowerShell team on GitHub, how long should it take for them to actually expect uh, a triage and an eventual patch? Yeah, so there's, there's really two questions in there. You know, one of those is, is how long does it take to triage? Um, and that, that's usually very, very quick. Um, we've got some statistics that show that most of our, our issues are getting triaged within 24 hours or less. Okay. Um, you know, people are throwing labels. We have some great community members out there that help us out with our triage, make sure that those issues get directed to the right people. As for when it eventually gets patched, um, that can depend on a number of factors, right? So sometimes uh, something's a very simple bug fix. We may mark it as up for grabs or we may have somebody within our, our community that is willing to fix that really quickly. May also be an engineer on the PowerShell team that can take care of that in a matter of days. Um, and then you know, that's going to ship out with the next preview release uh, that, that gets shipped out on a monthly cadence. Um, however, if it's a bigger feature request, um, if there are design questions that need to be answered before it can be asked, we may require that a, a review for comment document get written yep. that sort of outlines the design of, this, uh, of the feature, uh, and, and that may be debated for, for a number of months. And we have some, some issues that we still really want to get to uh, that were filed back in 2017, 2018, that just are, are, are still uh, uh, you know, part of an ongoing effort uh, to, to make ourselves sort of more native in the Linux world, for instance. So it's really the, the same model as any other open source project. Yeah, yeah, and it and it's you know there, there's no secret bug database. Um, the engineers aren't working in in you know an Azure DevOps instance somewhere else. All the issues that we track are right there on GitHub. Uh, you know whether they were submitted by you or or us. So is do we know whether or not there's a lot of. Uh, uh, Mark is asking, a lot of PowerShell users on Linux, or is it still mostly a Windows world? Yeah, this is a great question. So, you know, we know obviously that all of the Windows PowerShell usage out there is going to be on Windows, given that, uh, you know, that, that was Historically. Kind of thing, yeah. Um, but with PowerShell Core, uh, we've actually uh, open sourced some of the usage data um, that, that we collect uh, as, as part of our telemetry efforts. So if you go to aka.ms slash psgithubbi, as in PowerShell GitHub uh, Business Intelligence, um, you could see a, a dashboard where we'll actually, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see that 80% actually of the PowerShell Core usage is on Linux. Eighty um, percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. So we actually had a very big growth month in October. Uh, up until October, it was about 50-50. Um, you know, and and uh, but but now the the Linux usage has passed far far and ahead of the Windows usage. Um, and so you know, among the PowerShell core users, at least, we're seeing majority uh, uh, Linux users. And when we're talking Linux here, are we making a difference between Linux and uh, Mac? Yeah, we are. So actually, um, the the interesting thing here is that uh, you know we 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 spent a lot of time um, bringing PowerShell. Uh, to Mac, and, and you know, there's a lot of quirks uh, you know, between Mac and, and a bunch of the other Linux distros that make it a little bit trickier to support. Uh, but we're really firmly committed to Mac OS support because we know that it's what a lot of people use for developer workstations. Okay. And we want to make sure that if you own a MacBook and you're, you're a Windows administrator, you're still able to easily you know, build modules, build scripts, remotely administrate your, your Windows server machines, um, you know, regardless of, of you know, what your IT department gave you at work. Okay. Uh, I want to bring it back a little bit to the module because I'm seeing a question. Um, so if somebody's tried, they, they, they were running in five uh, uh, on their machines, uh, on Windows, everything worked. They tried it in six, they failed. Now they're going to go and try it in seven. If it still fails, is there a specific location or somewhere, or what would you tell them in terms of looking for a new modules to maybe uh, address the problem they're having? Yeah, well, one of the things that I've, I've really been uh, trying to get out the door, and, and this is uh, you know something I've been working on for a while, is is sort of an overall module compatibility table. Um, I really want to get some documentation published that folks can go to by the time the PowerShell 7's out that says, hey, if you're using this specific first-party Microsoft module, uh, you know this is how you're going to get a version that's that's compatible with Core, or maybe here's a workaround for you. Yep. Um, but uh, you know we're we're seeing more and more native compatibility, so that's great. But often it requires that you maybe be on you know 1709 or 1803 of, of Windows Server, um, and, and that you need to uh, you know, potentially install a feature on demand, right, to get that latest module. Um, might be that it ships in the gallery. 
Um, but we also want to populate that table with where you can go uh, to help some of those, those feature teams uh, you know, prioritize PowerShell core support over, over maybe some of the other work that they're doing. So we really want there to be this central location that folks can go to to have those sorts of questions answered uh, you know, possibly before or after they've, they've tried PowerShell 7 with their scripts. Okay, uh, and one more that I'm having is um, the uh, aka.ms get PowerShell. So this yeah. is where they install it. Mm -hmm. Is there a plan to have that built into, like let's say, a feature update for Windows or Windows Server? Yeah, so today it's, it's uh, aka.ms slash get dash PowerShell, as you said, to pick up the latest version out of band. Um, but yeah, eventually we're, we're trying to figure out ways to bring PowerShell 7 closer and closer to inbox. You know, we're dealing with some support challenges now given that three-year life cycle that we talked about before. Um, but, but ultimately, you know, bringing it into the store, it's going to be very soon. Um, you know, we, we want to, uh, you know, potentially look at the WSUS catalog, the update catalog, making it easier to deliver into, you know, updates and golden images. So you'll, you'll see it find its way closer and closer to inbox as, as time goes on. Okay. Uh, and Somebody's asking if we can post the link for the Linux PowerShell core site. Yeah, so just aka.ms slash get dash PowerShell if you're, if you're looking to install it. Otherwise, if you're looking for the open source repository, we've got tons of, of links and, and more information on, on where to go uh, at github.com slash PowerShell slash PowerShell. Oh, perfect. Uh, and uh, you have a session today. I do, yes, I'm speaking uh, in, at 11.45 uh, in the Tangerine Ballroom, uh, just down at the end here, I think it's W3 uh, to four or something like that. Um, but find it in the session, bu session builder, PowerShell 7. Okay, uh, can you give us quickly uh, like a nugget of the most uh, uh, asked feature or, or thing that you're going to talk about that uh, wasn't there before? Yeah, I mean, some of the, we, we've got a ton of new features. It's, a, it's an awesome grab bag, but you know, we're, we're looking at for each object parallel. We're shipping a bunch of new operators uh, in the thing. We've got ternary operators, null coalescing, uh, pipeline chain operators. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, you know, some more of the backwards compatibility, what's coming down the pipeline uh, after seven. Uh, so we're really, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're, we've got a, a ton to share. So I'm, I'm sure I left some stuff off. There's going to be just goodies galore. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Joey, for joining us today. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day today here at uh, Microsoft Ignite.